Well, it's the weather for it. We're here at the Portico Library, sweltering and hot. Are you too nice and hot? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm wonderful. <laughs> I need to uh, keep out the sun. Keep out the sun. And I'm in because the here at the Portico Library, <clears throat> it's the Whitehead Files, and it is the Windrush 75th anniversary special. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I've got two unruly guests. My fellow, so I'll introduce myself. My name's Caroline Whitehead. I am on the, I'm, I'm one of the trustees for the Portico Library, I'm also chair of the Public Programming Committee, as well as um, founder, co-founder and managing director of the Zebra Partnership. Oh. To my right... Oh, I thought you were still introducing yourself. <laughs> to my right, honestly, so rude. <laughs> to my right is Kevin Dalton Johnson. Oh, very and, distinguished. Yes, very distinguished, and he is my fellow trustee. Tell right. us a bit more about yourself. So it's Kevin Dalton Johnson, soon to be, or hopefully, January, Dr. Dalton Johnson. Yeah! Oh! yeah. Okay. Just thought I'd get that one in there. Yeah. Um, I'm also teacher, um, researcher, MMU, and also creative impact lead for the Running Me Trust. Fantastic. Oh, and I'm a sculptor. Yes. Oh, now I'm He's impressed. He's a sculptor and artist. Now I am yes. impressed. And then to my left. Were you not impressed before? No. <laughs> I know I'm going to have my hands full. And to my left, I have uh, the unruly, but also the very, very um, revered and respected Elizabeth Cameron. Hello, Dame Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am indeed Elizabeth Cameron. And do you like me to address you, darling? Well, no, no, address well, the camera, address yes. the camera. So I'm Elizabeth Cameron. I am um, an equality, diversity and inclusion consultant and lead at the moment for a, a housing organisation. But my essential job is that I'm an equality, diversity and inclusion consultant and race equality specialist. So I tend to advise um, organisations on how they should be with their policies around race equality. Excellent. And on a serious note, your advice is very good advice. Yeah, thank you so much. Excellent yeah. advice. But we're here um, to smile and to think about the people that came on the Windrush, our parents, our aunts and uncles and family. And I don't know about you, but I had lots of aunts and uncles that had no blood connection to me. Did you have those? Oh, I did indeed. <laughs> and, and you know, you might find out in years to come that they actually did have a blood connection yeah. to you. Well, uh, yeah. Maybe a bit closer blood than you thought. So the, the, there are some of those stories. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of people who, it was a respect term, wasn't it? Mm. You, you said auntie because if you said auntie, it showed that you understood that this was somebody who you should respect, somebody who, who's, who's if, if they decided to tell you off, for example, you should, you should adhere to whatever they've said, you know, and, um, and there was a big thing about respect, you know, children were to be seen and not heard. Mm. We were put in generally in different rooms. Um, you didn't really make much noise when parents were about. And, you didn't uh, go in the front it. room either. No. You did not go, go in the front room. room. <laughs> but let me just take it, take it back. Let's take it back to go forward. First of all, to set the scene, Kevin, Elizabeth and I did not come over on the Windrush. We were born here in the United yes. Kingdom and our parents and our relatives came over either on the Windrush or some, some other route. My mum flew in. She basically act, acted like she was. Oh, um, get you. I know she was. She was. A, she was a Jamaican. Stush. She was a Jamaican house in bouquet. Oh. She was. But um, going backwards, we had World War Two, and then um, to actually help rebuild the country, there were these adverts that were in the Jamaica Gleaner and put all around the place because, of course, Jamaica and other places in the Caribbean were part of the Commonwealth and uh, the mother country, the United Kingdom, stretched out to the Commonwealth to help. They wanted them to come over to help rebuild the country. That was the pitch. That's what they got sold. Um, and they, so royalist and so um, loyal to, to the crown that they said, yes, we'll come over. And what was come and did and re refurbished, really, was the Empire Windrush that was um, one of the huge ships that came over, but it wasn't mm. one of the only ships, was it? 
No, it wasn't. No. No. So, uh, so, so basically, they came over, and the first one came over in 1948, and that's what this 75th anniversary is all about. Is about the first ship that came over in 1948 and to- and docked at Tilbury. So, that voyage, I can't remember how long it was, but but basically, people, a lot, everybody knew each other, but there was a community that that came together on the voyage over. So they looked out for each other when they got to dry land. So, who in your family came over on the Windrush? The period, we'll say Windrush period. Mm. Um, It was my grandmother on my father's side. She came over and then sent a message, sent word back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm for her son to come over, mm-hmm. to come over with Uncle Freddie, who was not uncle, but uncle. Okay, you see. And then he came over and looked after my father here and got him an apprenticeship. Oh. And that was what used to happen yeah. then. And when he came over, yeah. he then met his mother for the first time in I don't know how many years. Oh. And then my mother's mother, Adina, she came over. And well, you've got an Adina. Have you got an Adina? You've got a, oh, she wasn't <laughs> called Douglas, was she? She wasn't a Dina Douglas, was she? No, Adina, no. and I call that Adina. Re- Adina, yeah. She best not be your auntie, my auntie oh. best not be your oh. auntie, because this is my Oh, Adina wait a minute, have I got a red book? Yeah. Watch it. Only people of a certain what? age, have oh, I got a red book? This is no. your life. Oh, it's not a windrush. come on. Well, that she sent for her daughter, who was my mum, Lilith and came over. So dad came over when he was 17, mom came over when she was 10. Mm-hmm. Neither of them right. knew their parents. Oh. And that was quite, that was quite common because families were just broken up. Yeah, they broken were, up, broken they up, their parents at all. They'd never not seen really, them. Not really, not really. Well, they'd seen them, but when they came over to Jamaica, it was like, well, who is this person? Because mm. they've been living with grandmother or aunties oh. in Jamaica and so yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. Oh, what about you, oh, Elizabeth? Oh, that was not my experience at all. So, so different is that uh, my mum was, uh, she, she, of course, says she came over on the plane, although we have this conversation with her now, which is, mum, did you really come over on the plane? And she still maintains she came over on the plane, but we think she might have come over on a boat. Not a small boat, a big boat like the Windrush, but not the Windrush. It's a ship, so darling, she was, it's a ship. Well, okay, it was a ship, it was a ship, ship, boat, it flew on the, did flew. it float on the water? It did, but, yeah, it, but you have to be careful, you've got to be careful. Banana boats and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, yes. do you see that? Yeah. Boats, boats, that's, yeah. that's a big yeah. thing, yeah. We'll, we'll have that conversation another time. Yes. This is just about my parents' passage, so going back to the story, my father arrived separately from my mother, my mother was... Uh, on an, almost an apprenticeship herself. She yeah. was uh, a nurse and she had been asked to come over to the country to do nursing. Um, my mother was a, a very intelligent woman and a very learned woman, but she also was a singer. But also, and this is the bit we didn't get to find out about for a while, they had also had children before the children that were born in the UK. So we didn't know that then. I mean, I wasn't born yet. But basically, my mum came first. Um, They left, she left two children. She came over on a nursing. Yeah. Um, uh, like a visa, it? Like yeah, a yeah, visa. Yeah, work visa. What was it called? Work, like a work yeah, thing? Yeah. yeah, and she came over. She still kept that letter, a very important letter, which shows how she was invited into this yeah. country. Mm. And, and that was crucially important because when people started to, there started to be this scandal, not that that's what we're talking about, but it really was confusing for people because... Mm. You know, as you say, royalists. My my mm. mother is devoted, devoted mm. to these royals, and um, she I shouldn't say these, but to the royal family, mm. and uh, and it's because they were told this is your queen, mm. this is your you know the, these are your people, this is your country, and that that perception meant that when they came to the UK, it was just still their country. Mm. They, they hadn't made a passage to anywhere. They were coming and helping the mother country. 
And my father came over much later. He was a labourer. He, he came over later than my mother. And I think the story goes a little bit of a get together. Nurses weren't too happy. Nurses said, you can't stay here. Uh, and then the two of them set up home together, were married within six months and um, at 21 years old. Oh, well, that, that's, she, that's lovely. And I had that marriage certificate. Yes. They were married in Preston. In Preston. Preston. Oh, how glamorous. Yes. <laughs> I know, right? So in relation to, um, to mine, mine's, mine's slightly, slightly different. So my granddad, um, he left Jamaica and went to America because he, were, he got a job working with Pan Am which doesn't exist now, oh, which is Pan American no, yeah. I've seen which airlines. Yes, I've seen Pan American that. Airlines, right? And and so uh, I'm smiling because my granddad's a bit of a naughty boy because he used to come back over to Jamaica in a pilot's uniform. Ah! ah, oh. ah right? <laughs> okay. He never flew a plane in his life. Um, so, <laughs> ah. But he did work for Pan Am, but he was like he was like head of catering. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But he had a pilot on the side. He, he had put a pilot's uniform on and he'd put some money to side and he, and he did, you know, buy a bar and everything with the money because he got paid really well. Um, and so he said to my mum uh, when she was young, oh, you've got to come over to... Um, she's like, oh, but I've got this invitation to go over to England to be a nurse. Yes. And he's going, what do you want to look after other people for? No, you know... You're a qualified hairdresser because she was a qualified yes. hairdresser. You want to come over to New York? I work at um, it wasn't called Kennedy's, but it, the one that became JFK. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called before. But she said, I work at blah blah. You can get a, you know. There's all these women doing this, that, and the other. She went over to New York. <laughs> she went over to New York, and what my granddad wanted was a housemaid. Oh, um, <laughs> and. Uh, so my mum put up with that for three months and then she said, well, I might as well go to England and be a qualified nurse and actually, you know, help people who need help, you know. Yeah. Because I think <laughs> yeah. she put down, she put down that she wanted to work with war veterans, which is what she did, geriatric nursing. Oh, wow. mm. So she flew, she flew from New York um, and they had a layover in Newfoundland. I still don't know where that is. Oh, yeah. uh, they, and she came over to the to the UK That's and cold. yeah that, that that's the only thing I know Newfoundland cold and she thought I hope England's not that cold big shock uh, she came over to England in March mm. <laughs> and um, so she was working in um, the Manchester Royal, at the Manchester Royal Infirmary and uh, she was doing some work in I think extra work in accident and emergency and then there was this guy who looked a bit like Omar Sharif. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Who was a bit he was a bit cheeky, you know, like flirting with her and everything. And he'd had too much to drink and he'd fallen off a wall and broken his arm. That was my dad. Huh. Uh, my dad is uh, half Lebanese uh -huh. and half African. So he was born in oh. Beirut. His mum's from Sierra Leone, his dad's from Taya in in um, in the Lebanon. And he was born in Beirut, and his mum left his dad and went over to Sierra Leone and raised him until he was 12. And then his dad wanted him back because he had about four daughters in that time because that was oh, the only right. son. Wanted him back oh, to pay for his education. Yeah. So my dad went back to the Lebanon when he was 12. And then he got a place in, in o at Oxford University. I've got some friends from Manchester, good Muslim boy, not supposed to drink, drank, fell off wall, broke arm. Met my mum, uh, but she thought he was handsome, but cheeky. Anyway, one thing led to another. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hello. Uh, <laughs> no, they got married before then. But yeah, anyway, but that so that's that's kind of my thing. And my mum always blames my granddad for missing out on the Windrush adventure because that whole community that getting together. But that doesn't doesn't matter because the stories that some of them talked about my mum got involved in that but she was like oh I wish I did the voyage yeah. on the ship and you know came over and yeah. with people but that that didn't matter because she was still embraced even though she came to the UK via New York a circuitous route yeah 
Well, it's quite an adventure already, isn't it's, it? It's an adventure already. But yeah. you see, there is this part about this history that they have that, you know, when I look at, at my dad, you know, sometimes... And I might have said it then, he, he was just a labourer. But this just a labourer came to a different country where he had nothing mm. and no one mm. and put down roots, not only put down roots, but prepared himself to be a husband, prepared himself to be a father, at whatever menial amounts of money he was going to make, he, he, he was going to be the provider, you know, mm -hmm. very traditional thinking of, of, you know, Jamaicans, if you like, it would have been very much the, the, the man is supposed to be looking after his household, even though women worked. So there was no question of women not being able to work, they'd be used to seeing that. But, um, you know, that they would have the commanding word in the home, that's absolutely the way it was. And, um, my dad was ready for that in every way you know it didn't seem to daunt him at all that he you know he ha wasn't a professor like you he wasn't on his way to doing it he he, he didn't even think that uh, you know that further education piece was ever going to be his life but he knew that what he would do was be a good husband and a good father that and does. he was determined to be that Brilliant. Yeah, and he wasn't daunted. And he reminds me, as he came to London with his grip, you know, eventually travelled from whichever port. For and those do who don't documents. understand, a grip is a, grip. a suitcase. A it is. I'll translate. Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'll he came with his grip. And I tell you, the documents I have here, moth-eaten documents, came out of my dad's grip, which by the time we actually could face undoing this grip which is about 14 years after he died because we miss my dad still and mm. all the time he was not a saint but we still loved him uh, but we couldn't face looking in this grip and the, but then you know eventually we want to put the story together mm. and the grip literally fell apart this grip yeah it, because yeah, I mean, what it was held together with. Reinforced it's cardboard and paper, if you Reinforced yeah. cardboard that's what it was. <laughs> You know, that's what it was. It was reinforced but, cardboard and paper. Cause it, I, yeah. I know, because I have deconstructed said grip. Hello. I, I've done that already. <laughs> right. Yes, I've done that so already. So there you go. So let me throw it over to you, because I want, I want to ask, ask uh, both of you quite a... I mean, I want this to be sort of light-hearted and lovely memories, because sometimes, like you say, it was difficult to go into his suitcase and go and go through his stuff. It has, and if we've lost our parents, that it is extremely oh, difficult yeah. to to look at their stuff. But before I ask for anything light-hearted that came out of or that you know about these Windrush um, generation individuals, and this this podcast is is called "We Are Standing on the Shoulders of Giants." Okay, because yeah. um, we are standing on, standing on the shoulder of giants. But I want to ask a painful question. What was your first experience of racism? Over to you, Kevin. Ooh. I was just primed to say something else then. Because um, they, really, really, they were shocked. Really, yeah, they were shocked. Yeah, yeah. I really have to flip that another way around. And it's can I remember a time when there wasn't any racism? Because in order to... That's really powerful. Mm. It's, all, it's all I knew. Yeah. Having been born here mm. and heard my grandparents' stories, how they treated, were treated, yeah. then hearing my parents' stories, yeah. then seeing my mother get spat at in the street yeah. because she's black, or yes. dog shit put it's through the door, does. our door. Yeah. or hiding behind the sofa because they were throwing things at the, at the windows and I don't really know I mean racism's always kind of been hand in hand with mm. with me being born here first generation but you're not accepting it you know it's not like ah oh, that's how it is you're not accepting it but you're just saying it was I tell was... you when I realised what it was mm. is uh, I don't know if you've had this I used to have a dream and everything was perfect, get up, go to school, 
weekend, you know, go go and go and do shopping with mum and dad and everything, this that, and the other, and everything was just perfect. Heat as well, really hot. And then I would wake up, go in the bathroom, look in the mirror, and be shocked that a black person was looking back at me. Mm. Because in oh, my dream yeah. I wasn't black. Oh, wow. Wow, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I think... Have you had... What I have had that relates to that is... I'll take it from those words. The person looking at me yeah. was black. Yeah. And I remember being made to know that yeah. I was black. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you're right. Yeah. And I say this, actually, to people, you know... I talk, you know, I'm an ambassador for Show Racism, the Red Card, and when I do my little talk there... I tend to say that, you know, people, you don't, you know, you don't realise a child yeah. doesn't see themselves as green, purple or, you know, polka dot. They, were you, were they are here? who they are. I was you yeah, born here. here. I was born here. Yeah, that's what uh, I said. Uh, right, and, right, you know, right, I was right. made to know yeah. I was different. I was made to know I was different. People separated from me. They said, you don't play with her. She's yeah. black. Yeah. They don't play with her. She's a blacky sambo. Yeah. Um, you know, I would have been four, I would think. Yeah. Well, you know, it was very much the era of the marmalade jar, the gollywog, the uh, there used to be pins that they they stuck on there. Uh, you know, I, I think it was like a badge of some kind, but I it's think it badge. was the it's actual the it was gollywog, gollywog badge, and it was yeah. made like out of tin. Yeah. Well, you, obviously you we, yeah. we, but we didn't. Oh, you'd like, like this, Kevin. No, no, no I didn't say you but did, but, you, that's, but that's, yeah. what they, that's what yeah. they Yeah, and no, it. and it wasn't just that, there was a story. Mm. I remember this damn story. This, this story incenses me because I love to read. But this story is about a Sambo who ran round the tree or something and he until he melted into butter or something of the kind. I don't Tar, know. It was called Tar Baby. What was it? Tar Baby. Mm. Jeez, the, all I know is this. I'm going to keep this clean. That is the most damaging, the most hurtful, the most horrific thing to hear children repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly be told. Mm. That person over there equates yeah. to this Fufu, and I use the word fufu because that means fool in Jamaican patois. Yeah. We were thought of as fools, as stupid, as well, we didn't have any brain, the same level of brain as, as the same little white children who were there. And it didn't matter how pretty your ribbons were. And my mum put me in some hella pretty ribbons. Oh, yeah. Imagine yeah. my sisters yeah. all had ribbons. Pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. ribbons. Yeah. ribbons. It didn't matter how pretty our ribbons were. Somebody was going to pull those ribbons out, mm. mess up our hair, put their hands all up in the hair, yeah. and we'd be come home from school with knotty, knotty hair. Um, it'd be told that I remember they being told the earrings had to come out. We had to put uh, a string instead of the our earrings. Yeah, My ears cotton. were pieced. Yeah, yes, cotton. string, yeah, well, yeah. cotton, yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Cotton. Yeah. I used to walk to school with my so, two, two so sisters. So how early is that? I was four. Yeah. Well, I, I was I was a similar age. So, um, I was um, at school, and we have, uh, you know, like you have a Wendy house. Mm. Oh yeah. And um, my mum used to always say, "Why do they have enamel cups and so you know, like when you're playing tea?" Because uh, I always might want to look. We've got tea here. Um, they were enamel cups and saucers, but decorated to look like it was china. Oh, very nice, lovely cups and saucers. Nice. Yeah, so it made it look like we had Royal Albert china or whatever it was. And uh, so, I remember I had a little friend called Magruti. She was Asian, and oh. um, yeah, and uh, and two other friends who were white. And we went into the um, we went into the Wendy house, and there was this girl who, uh, I won't say her name, but this girl, she wasn't very nice. I don't know, we were at four or five. And this is learnt behaviour, learnt racism. Yes. It's learnt behaviour because before she was all right, I couldn't understand as a child why she flipped and was being nasty, but it's learnt behaviour. She was told, because she found out afterwards, that she wasn't allowed 
to play with myself or my gruti um, and that we were not allowed to um, be in the Wendy house. Now apparently her dad, this is what I found out afterwards, apparently her dad had done some um, construction work in South Africa. Um, okay. Yeah. So he, he, he came back with more than a tan, basically. He came back from South Africa with certain attitudes, passed it on to his little children. She got one of these cups, right? And she, she said a word, my dad said, I'm, you're not allowed in here when I'm in here. This is, this is my house, my Wendy house. And she threw, right? She should have, she should have you know, been on the rounders team or something, because she threw this cup at me. Remember, it's an enamel, enamel cup. cup. She threw this enamel cup at me, and it hit me right here, right? And split my forehead open, oh. right? Blood everywhere blood everywhere right and oh. um and and it was like something from carrie you know oh, no. right and I, and I just like dived and charged at her because she made me bleed so i dived and charged at her and i got shouted at oh um, who's yeah. bleeding oh, who's yeah. bleeding oh, right yeah. so i got shouted at and then and then what they did was got loads you know that horrible blue tissue mm. oh this is yeah the teacher. teacher's got the horrible blue tissue and like put it on my head and did not call my parents. Mm. Did not call my parents. And um, I went home with the, with the ugliest plaster on my head. Pass me that, pass me that there. Just pass me that. Yes. This is me going home like that. That, that was Aww. me going home, uh, being picked up and my mum's like, what, what's wrong? And then I told my mum what happened and she just charged, in, charged straight in and basically had, you know, had a go at them. And um, I should have been taken to A&E for stitching because yeah. it was a, a gash. Yeah. And to this day, I still have the gash oh. in my head. And, um, and yeah, so that, that was really learnt behaviour. Yes. But then the thing is, the girl, because she saw all the blood, she started crying. Oh, yes. Right? So yeah. it's like, oh, X, Y, Z, what's the matter? Hello, black girl here, blood down my face. Well, you learned that well, lesson I was going to say, learn that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn that. Well, and I was like, like no. I was like, mm. and, I thought, and I thought to myself, my mum and dad gave me a, a, gave me a conversation <laughs> because I was dual heritage, so my mum gave me the, One, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the Jamaican conversation. Yeah. And then um. my, my dad gave me another conversation, that whole thing about... I don't know. It was it was very interesting about stripping down with words and and without touching them, saying stuff in words and mm. and mm. particular mm. actions. Um, mm. You know that kind of like is a psychological yes. thing. It was quite interesting the the angle and the way. But no, it, that was my. I was four or five, uh, and that was my first um, encounter with racism. But I want to. Um, that's Sorry. painful for it's me. Pain, it's pain, yeah, it's yeah. painful. It's, it's painful. painful. It's really, really painful. But let's it just painful. let's bring the mood up a little bit. Um, I'm looking at the, the cutest, cutest little baby over there. You've got some great pictures on your iPad. Uh, uh, but you, but there's a oh, what? Who is that? Who is that cute baby? <laughs> this cute baby. Yeah. Is me. Oh. oh. You have well, not changed a bit. <laughs> and if you, if you go into any um, yeah, Jamaican front room, yeah. you'll probably see these yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. on and, the wall. And listen, right, everyone, this is what you need to know. This they, is they culture. They coloured them this in. They coloured them in. They coloured them in. Yeah. So we didn't have colour photographs, because we didn't have colour photographs. So we Just had expensive. black and white, but they used to yeah. send them somewhere to get coloured in. And mm. the reason why they used to do that is they used to send the pictures back to Jamaica all coloured in, yeah. in and they were wearing their finest clothes. clothes. Mm. So that in Jamaica they would think they're earning a whole earning yeah. a, a whole load of money. Yeah. When in fact the real truth oh, was listen, I totally got you go without. I have yeah. a wave slip of my dad's to share with you. I thought that's what you were. Yeah, did with. you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. it's from 1964. Okay. It's from 1964. So they've been here nine years by then, you know, they've been right. married and, and done all that. And um, he was earning, he, he's got uh, his weight, he, I mean, my dad kept everything. So, you know, this grip, 
That's That's everything. So four hours at one shilling and a quarter. I mean, what's a quarter of a penny? What's what's a quarter of a shilling? Uh, I don't know. Four four hours. Oh, four four hours. No minutes at one and a one one shilling and a half. One and a half shillings, and so many minutes. Okay, and so he does fifty hours. 50 and go on tell me how much he earns 50 18 pounds 18 pounds you just looked at that I know. <laughs> 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 she didn't know she didn't know because i'll tell you why she didn't know because when you see this thing what he's paid he does this thing and then something gets taken off him 10 minutes gets taken off him for short time I imagine that's when yeah. you go to the toilet. And Lord yeah. knows oh. what that was. Ten minutes for short time. So you must have had to hold yourself all day yeah. for eight yeah. hours, right? So that you didn't... Because this is, this is money. This is tempence yeah. Yeah. that's going to get taken off you. So you don't do it. He only gets ten minutes taken off him after 50 hours work. And he gets a cost of living bonus. Oh, yeah, of 11 shillings and 8 pence. So he gets, after national insurance gets taken off him, he pays to his unit, he pays to a savings thing. Uh, savings. Yeah, savings. He saves money. So out of this now, he saves 10 shillings every week. This man, I just feel to cry. I have to say there are eight children in my family. At this point in 1964, I was born also. So they had six children, six children. And my father, with the one one pound, 15 shillings and four pence deductions, which he pays, what's TA? I'm just dying to ask you though, Elizabeth. Is it a union? Did your parents drop partner? Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. 18 right. pounds 19. Just, right, okay, let, let, me just, let me just let me just pause. Right, again, it's not about us. Let's just for the for the viewers. For the viewers. The the crew the crew are just like <laughs> The crew are like, what? We'll have what? to talk about partner. What is partner? So basically... <laughs> it's finished. It's the closest, th- the closest thing to a partner would, I'd say, would be a credit union. Yeah. Right? So it'd be a credit union. But it's a, it was a community-based thing. And it whereby used to cause trouble. It used to cause trouble. <laughs> and trouble. the easiest thing to say, if there was 10 people, there's more than that. 10 people, and you'd be like number one, to num- someone would be number one, and so on. So 10 people, £10, £100. The first person would get a hundred pounds, but then they'd go, everyone yeah, would put keep paying, keep paying keep in, paying in yeah. and then, then the next person it would be their so, turn. They get yeah. the hundred pounds of keep paying in. So it was no interest because we couldn't go to banks. There was no so accommodation, no way to live, no, no live. banks, yes. no, no nothing. Banks. So yeah, that nothing. was our own yeah. Yeah. kind yeah. of banking, banking system saving. That yeah. was that was a banking system. Oh, okay. So like I said, the closest thing I know, especially because my office is in the uh, the cooperative. Uh, building. Um, I know about the credit unions as well, and uh, um, yeah, that's, that's partner. But yeah, it'll be you know there'd be sometimes there'd be trouble. Sometimes someone would uh, get their turn and not fulfil. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, and said not continue dreaming. dropping yes. the hands. So you go, where's no, Maud? Cut. Where's Maud? Where's Maud? Come on, <laughs> yeah, just don't just Maud pass gone? over that. Just not continue. Just say the phrase. Dropping the hand. Yes, you didn't drop the hand. You didn't drop, drop the hand. <laughs> one that always stays with me and it's when I, I would come to your house I would always bring something with me yeah because my mum taught me you don't go to anybody's house with your dry, dry hands dry, with your yeah, dry, with your dry hand. don't yeah. go there with your yeah. dry hand and yeah. it didn't matter how poor you were you take something yeah. take, take cucumber take yeah. a slice of cucumber but, but then sometimes yeah. sometimes so because my auntie Lena was like this somebody hand. would go and go oh I brought some mangoes for you and they go mm-hmm these are not very good mangoes. Oh, no. These are not very good mangoes at all. Okay. Oh. What else have you brought me? 
No. <laughs> She'd be like that. Oh no. Ooh, oh no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. She went in. No, no, no. Oh, oh, she. Oh, my, <laughs> my, <laughs> my aunt. My aunt. That's not usual. My aunt. Is that your auntie? My auntie was. Oh. She was just Where was like. Where's your auntie? Which island was she from? Saint Kitts. Oh no, she she was. Chine. No. Chine and Tobago. Where she come from? Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> Huh? No, like, she was from I'm teasing now. Montego I'm Bay, that now. one. Really? Mo Maybe Bay. She too posh. So Mo she... Bay, Mo Bay. Nothing was good enough. So oh, which, which except, except for her Carolan. Which huh? parish was your mum? St. Anne's, hence <gasps> Anne. My dad was St. Anne's. Yeah. There My was mum was St. Thomas. Uh, White horses. Mandel. Mand Mandeville. 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 That's where my grandmother was. Mandeville. So Manchester. Someone, yeah, there was Manchester, Man that's Mandeville. That's Mandeville. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Manchester, Mandeville, uh, but yeah, St. Anne's. So. And yours? Which parish? I don't you know, know. Parish? Well, no, St. Andrew. St. Andrew. Andrew. Halfway tree. Halfway tree. Halfway tree. Oh, yeah. Which yeah. is, a, 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 as I understand it, is the area, is it where Bob Marley came from? Is he around? I think that, my Yeah, I think he was. Town? Yeah, yeah, Trench yeah. Town? Yeah. And, and quickly followed by Trench Town didn't used to be like that then, did yeah, it? No, no raps don't Trench really Town is hardcore. Now, perhaps, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. don't think in their time it was because no. I, I have pictures of the nightclub where my, my grandfather used to sing and he was a very famous bass player. Well, let's, let's catapult to um, nightclub in Manchester. What's the connection? So, Elizabeth. What is the connection between a nightclub and your family? Well, my grandfather on my mum's side it was a double bass player and he used to play, he is Freddie Parkins. And he, you know, for anybody who would want to look him up, he was used to be on at the Glass Bucket Club and in Jamaica, halfway tree in Jamaica. And, uh, you know, so many of the uh, Tower Island Hotel people might know. And uh, he used to be on there. My mum used to sing with him. Her sisters used to sing, the Parkins girls. Mm -hmm. They were very famous. So actually, the way that my parents lived was my father doing this labouring thing. You see in these 18 shillings. Mm -hmm. Well, my mum could earn that in a night. Singing. Wow. Yeah. And she was discovered singing in the factory she worked oh. at. <laughs> yeah, get that. So somebody... In Preston, Chorley, Preston, she's working as a Kona or whatever a Kona is. And somebody says, you know, I, the working man's club I go to, they're looking for a singer. So, you know, do you want to do a bit? Mm. So my mum goes along and does it and earns more mm. in a night than my dad does all week, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, wow. So my parents actually didn't need the partner to buy the mm. house. Ah. They bought their house and have never had a mortgage and they bought their houses outright but let me come to the point the thing is so we have this history of everybody being a singer people uh, my mum is incredible she had a very good uh, singing career but always ran alongside having eight children doing a normal job and <laughs> which you had to do as well being a wife look yeah looking after the eight kids etc and um and they set up the first black club in manchester now i mean high class black club so i'm not talking about the west indian center which they were also a very large part of you know mm. they they helped with the educational programs that used to run on the sundays mm. and um uh, you know so sunday schools we used to have saturday educational clubs but they also had this nightclub and it is actually where the sawyer's arms is in Deansgate in Manchester. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and the yeah. irony is, is that I went marching there uh, to close that building down when it was going to be a lap dancing club. Oh yeah. But at six years old, I used to go there and perform. And I remember with my two sisters, we would do sugar. Now, if, I don't know if you remember the song, Sugar. I do, Sugar, yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, honey, honey. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was my highlight <laughs> six years old i still remember my little blue mini skirt and my white blouses well, anyway, well I'm, the ebony club in manchester well i am doing a black history ubuntu festival at the plaza theater in stockport on the 15th of october for black history month 
I know where to come oh, for a bit do. of entertainment. Yeah, well, that you was a link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just pick that up off the floor. Do you know what? Do you know what? I could talk to these two all night. You know, I was thinking we need to do a series. We need to do a series. We yeah. need to do a Definitely. series. We need to come back. I mean, we'll, I we'll did not talk even about it. Roy Sherland. And no, I haven't no, really did... talked about mine much. Really. And you haven't yeah? talked no, about yours. Really. Well, do you know yeah, what? We'll, we'll do another. I've we'll dominated. do another one. We'll, do, we'll squeeze. I'm a... sure they want to know more about mine. Yeah, I'm sure they do. And see your pictures. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kevin, Kevin is like a bottomless pit. That's all. Of I'm, what? Of what? I don't know. Of, of what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's a compliment. It's not really it appropriate. It is a compliment. Is it? What, what's in your thing? <laughs> I've got herbal tea. I don't know what you're drinking. <laughs> the crew, the crew, the crew made the tea. The crew made the tea. Yeah. They, they did make the tea. Yeah. So, this is what I'm going to do to wrap up. Windrush 75th anniversary. Yeah. We had some characters that came across. Ugh. You know, um, against all odds, that it was time to Fantastic. laugh, time to love, yeah. time to look after your yeah. family. But at the end of the day, like the, like the phrase says, we can see further because we are standing on oh. the shoulders of giants. Amen. When Windrush 75th anniversary, that time, 1948, what, to 1972, people came across to help rebuild the United Kingdom and this country and they did a bloody good job. Definitely. Respect. And um, what did Maya Angelou say? She said, and this is only one verse, you may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. This is Caroline Whitehead, Kevin Dalton Johnson, and Elizabeth Cameron. Thank you. Thank Plus. You.